Tegrin, VP of Product Management for Single Store. I'm going to do a deep dive into the product over the next few minutes. Single Store is a unified database built for data intensive applications. And it does this by providing three key capabilities. It's a scalable relational database, meaning you get the familiar uh, capabilities of ACID and ANSI SQL and a large ecosystem of tooling combined with a distributed cloud native uh, storage architecture that provides high availability uh, and the ability to scale online as you need it, and now with the separation of storage and compute. Combined with the unified data, the ability to have universal storage, which gives you the ability to run analytics and transactions on a single table type, and a multi-model system that gives you any type of data you want to store and query over, whether it's full text or geospatial or relational or time series or streaming, all through a single API. And it's optimized for data intensity giving you the fastest query and ingest speeds through a series of technical innovations through our in our distributed query execution engine and our unique storage architecture. Now, we're announcing a number of new capabilities in our June release. We're furthering our ambitions about being the best mission-critical database with features like point-in-time recovery, which give customers the confidence that even if data is lost through user mistake or hardware failure, they can get that data back and security and compliance through better certifi certifications like ISO 27001, HIPAA, SOC 2, and others. And technical innovations like separation of storage and compute, which allow users to design their system and scale their and size their clusters without having to worry about how much storage they have versus how much compute, which allows them and to do this in a way that doesn't compromise the low latency and performance they expect from single store. And this release is also the final culmination of a multi-year journey to build universal storage, a key innovation that allows you to have a single table type that runs you all your transactional analytic workloads without compromising the performance of either. And we're working to become the best and easiest to use database in the industry, giving features that give flexibility like suspend and resume and a flexible billing model that lets you give the best TCO of any database service you might use. We're also introducing additions. We have the standard edition, which is what you get today, that has our three nines SLA and all the core functionality you've come to know and expect from single store. We also have a dedicated edition that gives you the same core capabilities, but in a more dedicated customer deployment, whether it's on-prem or in the cloud. Now, come this fall, we're introducing two more editions, the developer edition that lets you get started and develop your applications, and a premium edition that gives you the core capabilities plus the mission-critical features like point-in-time restore and a stronger SLA. Looking further ahead, we have a couple of releases coming out over the next two years. The first we call Trusted Store, which is furthering our ambition to become the best mission-critical database, enabling further features like CDC out or snapshot isolation and more compliance certifications. The next release would be One Store, furthering our vision for becoming the one store for all your data and all your workloads, with deeper investments in JSON support and full text and all of the multi-model data types as well as investments in the development ecosystem and tooling integrations. And lastly, Global Store, an investment to make it easier for you to govern and manage your data at scale across all of your regions around the world, enabling you to, through policies in the engine, make sure that your data stays where it's supposed to stay or is replicated to the regions it needs to go to, adhering to all the regulations, both internal and external, that you need to follow. But enough talk. Let's see the product in action. So next up, we're going to have two product managers from my team going through some demos showing you how universal storage works and the separation of storage and compute. So to tee it up, imagine you're a developer working at an e-commerce site where you need to be responsible for both the operational aspects of the site, making sure that user can do their orders and do lookups and find them, and then as well as deliver analytics both internally to your company and to your uh, resellers on your site to give them analytics about how their merchandise is selling. And so you need to be able to do that in a way that makes it an interactive uh, and powerful experience for your customers and your partners. Now, previously, you'd have to do this by using multiple technologies and stitching them together with complex CTL. And Eric's going to show you how you can do all those types of queries on one universal storage table type. And then Mike is going to follow up to show you how we can scale the system based on spikes in the workload.
let's take a look at a demo of my application. So I, this is a, um, I'm going to show you actual SQL, you know, for you practitioners in the audience. Um, so I've got a database called OrderDB that's already loaded. Um, and you can see on the left here, I've got several different tables, customer line item nation orders and so on. Uh, here's the size of the tables. So you can see that uh, the uh, the orders table um, has 150,000, excuse me, 150 million and some odd rows. And line item has 539 million and some odd rows in it. So uh, this is a an e-commerce application that has order orders and line items, of course. And um, so let's try some selective queries just to illustrate, you know, how fast they can be with single store uh, universal storage technology. So I've got um, indexes uh, created appropriately on these two tables. Um, now let me get the max key value. And here's a fast selective query that just uses a hash index on the order key column of line item. This this table that has over 500 million rows. So I run that and it's instantaneous. You know, so this is column store, uh, yet you know it came back instantaneously. So here's a fast join query that, that joins orders and line item on the order key, uh, where we filter on order key on the, the order table. So it's gonna have to find one order record and then join it into line item. Normally, you'd expect this to take a substantial fraction of a second in a data warehouse type DBMS, but let's take a look at this and see how it does. So it came back almost instantly. So this 180 milliseconds, I'm running uh, in our platform as a service in a remote location, single store managed service. And the, the large majority of that is just round trip message to the server. So we can actually profile this. So if I profile it, um, you see it actually took four milliseconds to run. So that's pretty darn fast. That's OLTP level speed on column stores on, with large data sets. Uh, by the way, this is a four unit uh, single store managed service cluster. It's using Bottomless, our new separation of storage and compute. Um, so it's got 32 cores total on the leaf nodes. So um, now here's multi-column unique key enforcement uh, demonstrated. So there's a a multi-column unique key on line item, which is the order key and the line number. So I'm gonna insert one row into line item, which is from line item. So obviously that's gonna violate the unique key constraint. So let me run this just to demonstrate. See, I got an error message as you'd expect. So it's just to demonstrate how uh, we do multi-column unique key enforcement. Okay, now I'm gonna start some trickle inserts on another session. I wrote us store procedure, trickle new orders to insert new orders into orders and line items both uh, that you know that match up with each other. So um, this is going to do batches of 100 with a sleep of a tenth of a second between batches, 2,000 total batches. That's what that means. So let me let me run this in another session. Okay, so here I am. This is another session connected to the same database. Um, so now that's running. So let's go back and um, let's just see the table sizes. So let me see the size of orders. So I'm going to run it again. So it's you know 100 you know see it's 125,000 after the 150 million. Now 129. So it's it's the sizes are increasing, similar for line item. So you can see the sizes are going up pretty rapidly. So this is a pretty fast trickle insert. Uh, and so now I've got a database that's a transactional style database that's being updated in real time. Well, let's run a, an analytical query on it. So here's a, a one table analytical query with some a group by and aggregation in it. Let me run that against my uh, live orders data. So there it goes, it came back pretty quick. So three seconds, let me run it again, only 1.4 seconds. So this is doing an, uh, a full scan of all 500 and some odd million rows of 
of data in the orders table, an interactive response time on a database that's being updated concurrently. So here's another slightly more complicated query. It's a five, five, six way join. It's going to take a little longer. Let's, but let's run that in real time. And we'll, we'll see that, uh, you know, we can do some analytical queries that are pretty, pretty beefy, pretty substantial, uh, in, uh, fairly interactive time while we're concurrently updating the database. And this is a big join, you know, line item and orders are big tables and then joining to several other satellite tables. Um, so I, what I've showed you today is that I've been able to build this um, real-time analytics application economically um, on a single system with our new capabilities in 7.5, the completion of universal storage. And, uh, you know, single store is just amazingly efficient. It turns out I only needed four units of single store, which is about 32 cores to support this app. I've needed 10 times that much hardware with other databases I've used for similar size applications. So, um, you know, bottomless is just incredible. It's almost too good to be true that I can separate storage and compute. I can you know, my inserts are super fast. My analytics are really great too. Um, hey, and after the holiday rush is over, you know, I'm in the holiday rush right now. So after the holiday rush is over, I can dial things back down, um, and say by half or, or something like that and uh, save money. I can do it all online. So, you know, this has really given me ide ideas for other single store use cases. So, and with that, I'm going to hand it over. Thank you. That was a great demo by Eric showing how the power of universal storage. Next up, we have Micah who's going to show us how you can scale it up and down uh, and suspend and resume as you need it. Hi, I'm Micah Bakhti. I'm the director of product for the managed service. And Eric showed off some of the new capabilities and, and features that are part of single store and included in our 7.5 release. And I was going to show a little bit about the unique, unique architecture that we've built for the separation of storage and compute and how it gives flexibility to resize compute uh, without losing performance or sacrificing the low query latency that single store is known for. So I'm going to show an example of that in our product. And Eric's running a workload uh, that de demonstrates the efficiency and performance of the single store engine. But after the holiday rush goes down and we don't need as much processing power for our e-commerce users, uh, we want to scale down our workload. And I want to reduce my overall operational expense for this workload. Uh, and I want to divert those resources to a new cluster that I want to set up for an application that I'm building. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to our e-commerce application uh, database right here. And I'll go ahead and scale that down. So we can see right now I've got 32 virtual CPUs and 256 gigs of memory. Uh, and I probably only need about half of that after the, uh, the holiday rush. So I'll go ahead and, uh, and I'll drill into that cluster. And I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and resize my compute uh, on that specific instance. So you can see here, I've got the S4 size. I'll go ahead and edit that to scale it down. I'll select an S2. And I'm going to update the size of the cluster. And that's going to go ahead and it's going to scale down my resources in an online fashion. So we can see we've already updated the size to S2. It's going to go ahead and uh, remove some of the resources from the cluster. It'll automatically rebalance all my data um, and take care of everything for me so I don't have to worry about it. So super simple to scale down the cluster. Uh, if I go back to my, um, my different resources that I have running in single store, um, we can see that I also have a, uh, a dev um, cluster. Uh, I've got that running for some developers that are building um, a, a new application for the company. Uh, and this one is, uh, is running in North Virginia. And, uh, and I happen to know these developers went on vacation. Um, so they're taking a long vacation, uh, and I don't need this cluster up while they're out. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to, um, to suspend this cluster. So I'll go up here to the, um, the Options menu, and I'll click Suspend. And that'll automatically shut down the compute resources associated with this cluster. It's uh, now in the suspending state. Um, and it'll keep all the data live, so I don't have to manage the data or move the data. Uh, I can just su suspend the compute resources until those developers get back, and I won't be charged for any of the compute. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new cluster. Um, this new cluster, we'll go ahead and create here. And this is going to be for a new application that I'm building. So uh, I'll set up the name of this as new application. 
and I'm going to launch this in uh, AWS uh, Paris. And you can see here, I've got the, um, the sizing. Uh, I'll start them out with an S2. That's gonna give them 16 CPUs and 128 gigs of memory, select the size. And I actually don't know how much storage they're gonna need, uh, but because we have the separation of compute and storage, I can set them up with an S2 compute cluster and they'll have unlimited storage. So they can just start ingesting data and no matter how much data they ingest in this cluster, uh, they won't run into limits. Um, they'll be able to continuously ingest that data uh, and then query it as they need uh, based on their workload. And I can resize this, uh, this compute cluster in the future. I can size it up if they need more performance or size it down if I want to reduce costs. And I can do all that completely transparently of the data being stored in the cluster. So I'll go ahead and finish setting up this cluster. I'll create a password for access. And uh, I've automatically whitelisted my IP to connect to the cluster. Uh, the service does this for me automatically. I can add new IPs if I've got other applications that I want to connect. And I'll go ahead and launch this cluster using my existing information. And that's going to spin up this brand new cluster for me in the Paris region. Uh, it's provisioning all the infrastructure, doing everything for me. Um, I don't have to worry about it. Uh, in a couple minutes, it'll be up and running, and I can go ahead and start loading data in or connecting applications to the cluster. So completely autonomous, uh, easy to manage. Um, and because of the separation of storage and compute, I have total flexibility to size my compute workload up or down as I need. Uh, and I don't have to move the data out or worry about backing it up before I suspend. Um, the data is always there when I want to bring the application back up online. So that's the overview and demo. Um, you can see I'm managing a bunch of different clusters for different workloads. Uh, and with 7.5 and the separation of storage and compute, it's really easy for me to manage my, my clusters and resources um, to scale up with my workload demands. Uh, and also as the number of users on my application increase, uh, I just scale up single store. So that's it. Thanks. Thank you, Mike and Eric. They really showed the power of universal storage and separation of storage and compute, and why single store is the most powerful database for data-intensive applications.